This is a Momentum Media production. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Okay, how you going? It's Phil Tone here. I'm the host of the Smart Property Investment Show. Hope you're well. Navigating through property, property investment is what we do. We've been doing it on this podcast for many, many years. And uh, the good thing is, is that we're diarising the way in which the ebbs and flows of Australia's property markets. Um, uh, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, sometimes it's indifferent, sometimes it's growing, sometimes rents are up, rents are down, sometimes interest rates are up, and that's exactly the environment we're in right now. It's been dominating a lot of the conversation is around interest rates and what to do about it, rightfully, as property investors looking for opportunities where they exist. And I know a lot of property investors are really thinking about buying in this market uh, if they do have the serviceability to secure debt. But something we probably, I wouldn't say I've neglected it because I don't neglect anything, but probably haven't put too much focus on most recently is around uh, property management. So for those of you who know, I sort of take a key focus on property management. Sort of I've invested in prop tech startups around property management. I think there is a better way for it to happen. I think there's a lot of smart people doing it in very different ways at the moment. So it's a key focus for me. And I really want to start sort of discussing about it more on the Smart Property Investment Show. We, we sort of do touch on it occasionally. Um, a lot of it has been around making sure that the rents that you have right now are probably the market rents for the market they're in right now. We all know that rents have increased considerably and property investors really need to be looking at making sure not only are they investing in the right places, they have the right capital uplift, but at a cash flow level, that it is as effective as possible hold of your property. And there's lots of different ways you can do this these days. And there's some organizations around who've been doing it differently for a number of years. And so one of them sort of sparked my interest the other day. I've got a report coming through and I get heaps of media releases and property reports. They, they fill my inbox every day, largely. And the hardest thing for us at the team here at Smart Property Investments is working out what we cover and what we don't cover. But a couple of reports particularly which sparked my interest, and it's from DHA, which is Defence Housing Australia. What they've done is is had a look at the the holistic cost of holding investment property from the purpose of property management. Now, most people bandy around numbers of of what the agency, the property manager takes as, as part of the process of managing your property for those people who don't self-manage. And often uh, they overlook a lot of the other costs connected with holding investment property. And I sort of went, yeah, it's not a bad way to look at it. DHA has gone away and, and got some smart researchers to look deeper into this. And they've, they've put a couple of reports out and we'll make them available on smartprotinvestment.com to you go and check it out. But it just got me thinking around the total cost of holding investment properties. When I look at my own portfolio, I look at it, but a lot of times people forget about when property is vacant. They forget about reletting fees. They forget about hot water systems being fixed. They forget about someone putting a fist through a wall and uh, having to patch it up and repair it. And uh, these things can add up. And what you do pay for property management to the real estate agent or the property manager can end up at a cash level being significantly a lot more. So one of the bit of an itch I wanted to scratch and get into it also is really the intersection for me, although you might not know, but I spend a lot of time in and around the defense and national security sector as well in part of my job here at Momentum. Uh, we have big media brands and events for the defense, cyber and space sector. So it's an area I'm quite familiar with and I'm very conscious of the great work our our men and women in the ADF and their families uh, contribute to Australia. That's growing as well. If you're not connected in with the goals and ambitions of the ADF, they're looking to grow that over time. And guess what? People who are in the ADF need places to live. And uh, it's just as critical as sometimes the the weaponry they use and the capabilities they have. If we have a engaged and connected and happy defence force and their families looked after, if we're good on the home front, it allows our soldiers, sailors, airmen and airwomen to fight effectively on the front line. So it's a big, important part of it. And Defence Housing Australia is connected with it. So all this sort of wrapped up. I want to have a chat about it. I've asked their leasing and acquisitions operations manager coming over the army. Got some questions for him, Luke Jorgensen. How are you going, Luke? You well? Hi, everyone. Yeah, you're going great. Thanks so much for the opportunity to come on and have a chat. Really exciting for me. So yeah, let's get into it. Let's get into it. I won't give you too much of a hard time, but I'm, I am very, very curious. I am very curious because I'm a bit familiar with DHA, Defence Housing Australia. You know, and I know the important work that DHA does in sort of housing our, our servicemen and women. And that contribution is a big part of, of the effectiveness of our fighting force. But can you give me some sense for those people who aren't too familiar with DHA? Well, what do you guys actually do? How many properties do you have under management? 
Sure, sure. Yeah. So I think the our starting point here should be our key mission. And our key mission is to supply suitable housing and related services to defence members and their families. That's essentially why we're here. That's why we're created. That's what we want to, you know, impact upon this area. So we have over 16,000 properties across the country that we manage or own, um, make available to defence members and their families. And about 13,000 of those are owned by private investors. So we do lease from the private world as well as maintain some properties ourselves. Okay. And so that's how I'm familiar with DHA is that for many years, uh, you've had schemes to make investment property available for people and we'll have a chat about that. But what's really sparked my interest is that I always thought you had to buy a DHA property specifically for the purpose of it. You've changed things recently now where if you have an existing investment property or you're looking to buy an investment property and or you're thinking about building an investment property, DHA will also take that on rather than doing it fit for purpose. And that was like, I sort of get that. Yeah, I yeah. I want to learn more about it. That, so that's the new sort of inflection point that you've changed things up with, Luke. Yeah, it is. You know, as you mentioned, we had a, a really big focus on what we called our, our sale and lease back program from the past where we would build a property, buy a property, and then sell it to the private market with a lease attached for, you know, a significant amount of time. And that's not something we're doing as much of anymore. We've moved into what we call our direct leasing program. And, and that's something that my team here, at, you know, in a few different states manage as well with a few other people within our leasing and acquisitions team. And yeah, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to tap into that private market in Australia. We know the leasing market in Australia is a huge industry. So we want to tap into that. We want to be able to lease properties from the private market, from private investors, from landlords, and we want to be your tenant as well as provide a number of extra services for a fixed fee, of course. And that's going to benefit, you know, investors um, with long-term, you know, secure tenants, and then obviously benefits us in being able to supply that great housing for defence members and their families. Yeah, I'm, I'm keen to look at the the mechanics and the economics of it all because, you know, yeah. at, a, at a baseline level, people always quote the fact that the management fees on, on DHA properties are higher, but when you look yeah, at the, sure. the holistic holding costs, I think you might be surprised at where some of those numbers are. But back to yep. DHA, how long has it been around? Like, we must have been providing... ADF members housing for years, right? Absolutely. So DHA exactly was created in the late 80s. Before that, Defence managed their own housing portfolio and we were created there for, for a few different reasons, but but mainly to increase the quality of housing available to Defence members and to contribute towards recruitment and retention in the future. So yeah, we've been around for a touch over 30 years. As I mentioned, I've gone from a small portfolio up to over 16,000. Um, and hopefully we've been able to impact a couple of those points I just mentioned along along the way there. Yeah, absolutely. And do you have properties right across Australia? Like I've been on a lot of yeah, military yeah. bases. So I think of Newcastle, for example, mm-hmm. Williamstown, the big uh, air base up there. So absolutely. you have houses around areas like that and other parts of yeah. Australia? Yeah, everywhere across the country, really. Uh, um, you know, wherever there's a defence presence, we will generally have some sort of DHA presence as well. So we have bases in all of our capital cities. Um, we are looking for properties in all of our capital cities, uh, probably minus Hobart at the moment, unfortunately. We, we have a very small presence there and, and we're adequately provisioned down there. But then a number of key regional areas as well where there's defence presence. So, you know, as you mentioned, we've got Newcastle, we've got Cairns, Townsville, Ipswich, Wagga Wagga, Sale down in Victoria, Rockingham over in the West, uh, a number of different areas that we're looking to house those defence members. So really what we look at is, you know, how many defence members are in that location that need housing, and then we'll look to put our provisioning targets together from there. Yeah, and, and sort of to the point I made earlier, um, we have a very transient defence force, the nature of the business, mm. um, uh, yeah. depending where you're posted. Um, uh, you often Absolutely. take your family with you. So uh, I think they worked out long time ago that if our ADF members uh, have a, a better home front, uh, largely they could be more effective. So give some Absolutely. sense of the need for providing housing close to these these military bases because there's huge communities connected in around them. And you find it, it's quite intriguing just how tight these communities are and you get yeah. this intersection of ADF members and, and, and the local communities. And again, I think yeah. of like uh, – like the hunter defense network, like it's a big focus, like the sporting teams and everything. It's 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 intriguing yeah, yeah. once you get into it. But but you mentioned beforehand, you know, this notion of, you know, property investors are looking for secure long-term assets uh to support their uh investment journey. But you said that you guys are both the tenant and the manager. Can you explain that a little bit for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um that's the way our, our agreement is set up at the moment. So right now the way our agreement's set up 
We have two specific agreements you would enter into as part of a, a lease with DHA. So the first one would be a tenancy agreement. So we, we just use the standard state tenancy agreement across the different states at the moment where you are, let's say, Phil, you're the property owner, you're going to be the landlord and DHA is going to be your tenant in this in this agreement. To coincide with that, we have what's called a property care contract. That property care contract states that DHA as a property care provider will will complete a number of services for a set fee in that circumstance. And, and that's where sort of the, the property manager element comes in. We, we don't necessarily call ourselves property managers. We, we call it a property care provider because it's, it's you know, a number of different services, but that's where that would come in. So for that service fee, we do things like vacancy management, uh, scheduling and facilitating services, repair services, and then we do an annual rent review on your property as well. Um, so that's what makes up our service fee. And I guess uh, under this new regime where, where you know, you're connecting in with current investors who have investment property in the locations where you need it, sort of, it's quite easy to work out what market rent is in these, these locations these days. Yeah, and, and look, we we keep that somewhat at arm's length as well. So as part of that annual rent review, for example, we will uh, send a, a work order out to a certified valuation company and they'll come back with a rental certificate detailing what they believe the market rent is in that area. So we use the professionals, we delegate to them essentially in that circumstance, we get no say in it. Um, we don't get to choose what it comes back at. They have to provide the evidence and say your property is worth, you know, $650 a week and and here's the evidence from the market which states that. So, you know, we find over a, a six, nine, 12 year lease agreement, having that happen every 12 months is the fairest way we can we can keep those rents uh, in line with the market and, and make sure that we're, you know, we're not getting left behind. What I understand they're quite long lease terms, which which can be, you know, good for property investors, um, uh, maybe less so, but I guess with that sort of annualised review of rents, you can keep it competitive, which is what, you know, I alluded to earlier. It's, it's been a yeah. big focus from the property management side of things, but it is a long time for um, res- in sort of residential uh, property management terms. Uh, mm. How long do people normally have terms with you for and and can you break it? If, if yeah, so great, great question. Um, I've done a little bit of digging into our, our database here and, it's certainly not uncommon for people to have, you know, two, three, even more leases on their property with us. We've got properties that have been in our portfolio for more than 30 years. So they've essentially gone through a whole mortgage term whilst it's been leased under a few different fixed agreements with DHA. So yeah, certainly can be long term. We could be talking, you know, anywhere between six and 30 plus years that, that it's um, sat in there. So in terms of breaking, what we look at it is we look at it like a fixed term agreement. So you would enter, let's say a a standard lease term would be a six-year lease with a three-year extension period. So we look at that as a fixed term agreement of that point in time. So there are specific termination clauses built within the residential tenancies agreements in, in different states. And we also always take into account if someone was to you know, wish to terminate a lease via mutual agreement. Hey, let's review the case. Let's see what's going on, both from the landlord point of view and also the defence members' needs. Apply them against each other. Take our needs into account and see if there's, you know, a mutual agreement we can make there as well. So you'd be a bit pragmatic about it. If you, yeah, that, that's yeah. right. You know, we we don't want to be hard and fast on lots of these things. People have circumstances where you know things change and they can't manage a long term fixed lease anymore. We take all of that into account. I've approved them before where we've cut it short, where it you know works for both parties. But all, also sometimes you know with, if with fixed term agreements, there's requirements to extend them out a little bit longer and and make sure we're looking at both parties. Yeah, there's always two sides to these things, and you know on the basis that you're providing back to your mission property for uh, Defence Force members, you know, mm. you probably want some continuity on that. So I can understand yeah. why yeah. You, you would have that approach. But like if you if you need to sell the property and stuff, there, there's yep. just ways you can work, work Absolutely. around. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, have, uh, we have a number of properties that go on the market as what we call mid-lease sales. So it would just be selling the property with the lease attached. You know, if you have... DHA lease attached, you know, in some circumstances that can be quite helpful for your sale. You know, if, if you're selling to an investor and they're after that guaranteed lease agreement, they're walking into it, they're getting rent from day one, you know, that can be helpful in that tool as well. So, yeah. And in terms of the rent you're receiving on, on the property is, you know, as I said, it's probably easy to determine what market rent is if you have like for like properties or existing investment mm. properties. People can question if they go, oh, hang on a second, I think it's worth a bit more. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a secondary valuation process built into the agreement. I won't go into the absolute details. No, of no, it, no. It's probably outside the scope of this, but I imagine it's sure, got some smart sure. boffins working on it. But, but yeah, look, you know, it sets out the process of if you get that rental certificate back and you're not happy with it, there's set processes that you follow to be able to have that rectified. You know, it includes letting us know within a specific time frame, organizing for your own valuation. There has to be a certified valuer as well. Can't just be, you know, John, John off the street who comes in and says it's yeah. worth X amount of money, but you have, have those requirements. Then those two valuers come back and they chat to each other and, and they work out how, how the difference came up and, and where they think it falls. So, um, yeah, very specific process built in to, to help that. Yeah. And, and these things swing in roundabouts and, you know, for property investors who are looking for, longevity and certainty around receiving their rent irrespective of market conditions. You know, I can see yeah, why yeah. something like DHA will appeal it, but you have it, you know, this property care contract. I just want to dig mm-hmm. into that a little bit because it's where some yeah, of the sure. things come up and, and whatnot. We'll just go to a quick break. Stay with us, everyone. Back in a moment. So we'll see you then. Crush the burden of rising mortgage repayments. We understand that managing your finances can be overwhelming, especially as interest rates continue to rise. With access to 70 plus lenders, our team of specialized brokers will find the best rates for your specific needs. Count on us to secure a lower rate swiftly, giving you the confidence you deserve. Book an appointment with one of our experts today to protect your financial well-being and secure your future. Call us now at 02 8866 or visit our website at finney.com.au. Uh, welcome back, uh, everyone. Still, Taryn, I'm host of the Smart Property Investment Show with Luke Jorgensen from DHA. He's a leasing and acquisitions operations manager. You, you seem to know your stuff, Luke. You've been at DHA for a while. A little while, a little while. So um, I've just gone past seven years here, not too long ago. So I really enjoy it. I love property. It's something I was sort of one of those. Maybe you call it weird teenagers who tags along to open homes and goes yeah. by themselves, and, and you know, I, I really enjoyed that. So it's a passion of mine, and and I love working here. I, I like contributing to the defence, you know, community, and and so we can combine that all together. And uh, yeah, I'll stick around for a bit longer if they'll have me. That sounds pretty good. You invest in property yourself? You probably invest. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah I do. I have. Uh, I have an investment property. I've only got one at the moment. Hopefully, we can build on that in the future. That's but yeah, look, start. going well. Yeah. No, it's uh, it was a great way, and look, you know, we've got a favourable audience here. These are all property investors. The <laughs> the many many thousands of people that tune into this um, are all out there looking for ways in which to amplify uh, their investment journey. It sort of gets to the point around around DHA because you know I think most investors have probably heard about it. I heard about DHA in the past, but maybe have some misconceptions around it. And one of the reasons why I wanted to get get you in and have a yarn about it, you, you have this thing called um, a property care contract. So rather than being the property manager, you, you care for the property and you you match the person in there from the defence force, mm-hmm. but you go over and above just sort of doing the bare minimums of taking rent and, and giving out rent. Yeah, yeah. And one of them is around sort of like you do – where you cover sort of non-structural repairs and stuff like that. Yep. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so what, why do you do that in addition to all the other stuff as, as inverted commas property managers? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, our repair services is, is one of the services we've built in um, as one of our big differences to the private market, I, I suppose you could say. And, you know, you mentioned there we, we do non-structural, most non-structural repairs. I think that's that's the key point to make there is is what we're looking to do is, is provide some value to landlords, obviously. And, and obviously, we want to keep our properties in good condition, you know, servicing our defense members for what their purposes are as well. So, so you know, this was a, a way that we're able to, to meet both of those requirements. How I'd sort of explain it would be, you know, somewhat of your day-to-day maintenance. And, and I'll, uh, I'll preface this by saying I would always recommend that when we're talking about repair service, I'll refer you back to the property care contract, have a read through, make sure you understand it if, if anyone's chasing it. But, you know, what we're looking at is is that stuff that, you know, maybe was working yesterday and it's broken today. That's the type of stuff that's going to, to be covered. So an example of that might be, you know, you were cooking your dinner last night, your cooktop was working fine, you came to cook your dinner tonight and, and unfortunately, you know, it won't light or something like that. That's what will be covered. DHA will send a suitably qualified tradesperson in. They'll identify what the issue is and they'll repair it. Or if they can't cost, uh, you know, repair it in a cost-effective way, they'll replace that item. Same thing for your air conditioner, for example. You know, it's in Canberra here. It's cold. Uh, it's winter. We want to make sure that your, you know, your heat is working. So it was working yesterday. You've come to switch it on this morning, and, and it's not switching on. Exact same thing. We'll send someone out there and, and get that repaired under that property care contract. 
and the idea is that you want to keep the person in to probably happy, right? You don't want to absolutely, to yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a big part of it. Um, you know, we we want our defence members to be comfortable in there. Um, we want them to have the properties acting, you know, and and working as they're intended to do so. So yeah, that that impacts that. And so, do you um did you publicise the the management fees? Like, how much yep. what, a percentage? Or what what are they? Just give me yes. sense. Yeah, so um, our for our for a freestanding property, they are sixteen point five percent inclusive of GST. Key point, uh, yeah, inclusive of GST there, so fifteen percent without it, and then for uh, a, you know, a select number of of properties where body corporates manage the external portions of the premises, they qualify for a lower service fee of thirteen percent inclusive of GST. Okay, and and most people with they go, oh, that sounds a lot higher than what I pay in my yeah, pay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, six percent, seven percent, whatever. Um, yeah. Um, and 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 right for the people go, oh, but you know, because most people think that's probably apples for apples, but it's not actually apples yeah. for apples. And this is why you've done all this work. Um, yeah, with, um, absolutely. With who was it with Biz? Um, Biz Oxford, yeah, Oxford Economics. Economics. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's a good outfit. So so you went to them and said, hang on, we want to. Yeah, it sounds high. Um, but we actually want to understand what it actually costs. Mm. Uh, to hold a property over and above the fee you pay, you know, to a property manager. And this is how you've approached this on the basis that, you know, you do this sort of repairs and maintenance. I imagine in certain places you probably get the lawns cut and all that sort of stuff as well. Yep. Yep. So it is higher, but where or how does it wash out based on the research that you've put together? Yeah, yeah. So, so as you mentioned, what we've done there is we've worked with a few different companies to have these types of reports done in the past under some of our previous lease agreements. And now we've moved to our, our current lease agreement. We wanted to get that done again, just so we could quantify exactly you know what we're offering and how it does compare to the private market. Like we all know, we need a competitive product. That's what you know you need it or you won't exist in, in the property market. So we wanted to know that and we wanted to know the data behind it. So we sent that out to them. It was completely independent. We didn't tell them we wanted an outcome. We just said, hey, we want you to review all of our information and then review the pipe private market and, and tell us how we wash out. So that's what they did. They they essentially applied it in three different circumstances. So they've got three scenarios. You've got your low cost, your medium cost, and your high cost. And that takes into account things like fees, cost of vacancy, the repairs that you would be responsible for in the private market, and also the hassle of managing things yourself in the private market. So, you know, calling trades, getting quotes, checking the quality, making sure it was done right, that type of thing. And then takes those scenarios and applies them to our service as well across a number of different rental ranges and then tells you where you wash out on an annual basis. So when you read through the reports, as you mentioned, um, you said you might pop them up on the website. We have them on the DHA website too, if anyone's interested in, in having a read through them. But what you find on, on the medium and high cost scenarios, so that would be um, medium cost is essentially your average property. So, you know, one and a half weeks vacancy per year, an average type service fee average level of maintenance across the year, you find that we came out uh, significantly on top under most of those circumstances under the, the medium scenario. And then when you apply that to the high scenario, so you know maybe that's a property that's a little bit older, has a little bit more maintenance going on. It might be a, a higher vacancy region. So let's talk Canberra, for example. Canberra's vacancy rate's 2.1% at the moment, probably higher than it's been over the last number of years. So all of that goes into the thinking. And under that high cost scenario, we've come out significantly in front across you know a rental range from $400 a week all the way up to $850, where, which is where the report it sort of stopped. So that was great to have. It gives us that data behind it to say, okay, when you actually apply all of the costs of owning an investment property, while we sound high at 16.5%, you know, sometimes once you apply them all in there, the private market can get to 15, 20, 25% in certain circumstances. So, so you've gone externally, got Oxford Economics to do this. So they stand by the numbers. You went, hey, go and work this out for us. We don't, yeah. we, we don't want you to find a particular – you must have sort of known – where it would land after doing this body of work when you look at the sort yep. of holistic cost of ownership. But yeah, yeah. were they surprised when they come back and they hand you the, the draft findings? They go, oh, well, geez. Yeah, well, look, I, I think uh, so. Knowing um, research people, they get pretty excited about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And look, we, we did a webinar with them uh, uh, just, I think it was uh, two weeks ago now, and and Jeff, who was the lead on that project, was presenting on there. And, and, and yeah, I think that's what he said, essentially, you know. We're fully independent here. We had no expectations and, and this is how it's come out and, and we stand by these results. So that's great for us. 
you know, we were hoping this would be the way that yeah. it come out, but you know, it's always one of those risks that you take and, and, um, but look, beneficial to have that we have the actual data and not just a feeling of, you know, if you go with our product, you'll come out in front. Mm. And are investors sort of getting it? I guess you've got, you know, know a bit about business. You've got the challenge of introducing something new and that is, yeah, hey, yeah. if you've got an existing property, you can do this. And then also run in parallel of that. Oh, and by the way, you know, it might be a better outcome financially for you as well. And I don't know, I haven't looked that far into it, so I can't give yeah. any sense of it. But yeah, you know, you got the research from from Oxford Economics. Is it resonating with with property investors? They go, no, 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 it's DHA too expensive. Yeah, we, we got a little a lot of interest in the webinar we run. Um, uh, we had a, a really huge turnout for it, which was really exciting to get everyone on there. Lots of engagement with questions throughout there. So lots of good feedback coming back from people who have read the report and, and grabbed it off our website and that sort of thing as well. So I think we're getting it out there. I think, um, you know, hopefully that reflects in, you know, us being able to enter into these agreements and provide some quality for investors over the next couple of years. Yeah. And have you got a sense for, you spoke about how many properties you currently, I guess the old language have under management. So you provide yeah. them for, um, a D for, for defense families. Like how many more do you need? You might, do you need a lot more or sort yeah. of, you need a few more? Like give me a sense of that. Over the next, um, over the next five years, we have pretty high targets on what we'd like to bring into the portfolio. You know, we have a lot of different, we call them DHFs, but, um, essentially areas where defense members are. We've got a number of them that are rising. We need more houses there, you know, and also we've had a lot of properties in our portfolio for quite some time. So investors are also, you know, cashing them out and and taking them as their, you know, their retirement plan. So we have a consistent turnover of property as well we have to replace. So we, mm. we do have really high targets over the next five years. A number of our locations we're looking to increase significantly. So yeah, yeah, we have lots of options going on. And I imagine then like some investor will be sitting there going, oh, okay, so maybe I should maybe change where I'm thinking about buying a property mm. if it's suitable for a DHA thing. And that, that's investors got to work that out. But yeah. I just want to chat about this sort of uh, how you make property available. We'll just stay with us, everyone. Let's go to another break back in a moment. Uh, welcome back. Phil Tarrant from Smart Property Investor. Having a chat with Luke uh, over at DHA. So, Luke, we sort of spoke before around sort of shaping maybe investment decisions on where DHA might want you know, properties. And as a property investor, I sit there and go, oh, if there's a demand for properties in those areas and I actually have a property in that area, it's probably not a bad thing. Or it might sort of change how I go about securing property with an eye not only towards capital growth, but for how I manage it. And I think we've spoken about the fact that, you know, having a relationship as DHA is the Verticomers manager of it may be attractive to some investors. But so just so I'm clear on this. So you can lease a property that you already have directly through DHA. So that's like the old yep. way it was done, I yep. guess. You can purchase a property and lease it back to DHA. So yeah, it could be yeah. fit, fit for purpose. You could actually build a property and lease it to DHA once it's complete. And then you guys do something with builders that specifically build this stuff, right? Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you've hit the nail on the head there. You've knocked it out. We'll have to uh, get you over. Uh, you know, to <laughs> <Go start. on. laughs> Absolutely. Now, uh, so yeah, look, the, old, the old and the you know the easiest way is you've got a property already. You're looking to lease it. You pop an application through our website, it comes to us, and we assess it. That's sort of the standard way. As you mentioned, you might be looking to buy a property and you want to lease it specifically to DHA. And what we can do in that circumstance is is if you pick something out on the market. So let's use Canberra for an example. You might come to our leasing and acquisitions team here and say, hey, Luke, I really want to buy a property in Canberra. I only want to lease it to you guys. Where are you looking for properties? We might be able to give you a few different suburbs here. Let's say, for example, you know, we're talking Gugong, Strathnan, Taylor, Whitlam. They're just four brand new suburbs in Canberra off the top of my head. There's obviously a number of extra ones as well. We might say, hey, have a look in there. We're looking for three or four bedroom properties, two bathroom, double garage, a little bit of backyard space, um, that type of thing. So you might go out, have a look on your different real estate websites, find three or four properties that you're interested in. You can bring it back to our leasing and acquisitions team here and we can have a look at them, give you a bit of a review. If we're both happy from them, so yourself and I are both happy with the property, we think it looks suitable for what our needs are, we can move forward to what we call a suitability inspection assess the property, get a valuation, and we can even provide a, a formal letter of offer to say, if you were to purchase this property, we will lease it for six years starting from the, you know, from the settlement date. So that way you know that 
if you were to go and buy this property, you've got your lease that's already locked in. You can settle on it, grab the keys, hand them straight across and and your lease starts from the next day. So well, we can provide a little bit of security to someone in that circumstance. Now, I will just note, we don't assess the property from you know a building standpoint or a investment performance standpoint or anything like that. It is solely assessed from a leasing standpoint, but you know we can provide that little bit of security there knowing that you're going to enter straight into your lease period. Same thing for a build. You, know, you might be building a property or looking to build a property. We can go through that whole assessment process beforehand and and give you that pre-commitment to leasing that property early on. So you've got that security knowing, hey, if I if I finish this build and settle on it and it's ready to go in, you know, August 2024, DHA's already committed to it and they've locked it away. They know they're going to take that property from when that property settles and it's ready to go. So a little bit of, you know, we can provide some mutual uh, benefit in that circumstance. DHA has a future pipeline of properties coming in and you get that little bit of certainty of knowing what's going on. Yeah, I didn't know you did that. And I find it quite, you know, it's not a bad thing. So someone like philosophically goes, you know what, I'm going to be a property investor. I'm investing in property because I want to make money out of property investment. But, Mm. you know, I can actually make my investment probably available to an ADF member. And they go, oh, that sort of appeals to them. Mm. I didn't know that you would actually look at it before build and or or purchase and go, if you do actually proceed with that, that particular purchase or build, I'm not going to tell you whether we think it's a good idea that you're doing it, but you're saying yep. we will lease it at this rate. Yep. So yeah. So it means there's no lag. It means that you can start making money pretty much from the day you settle. Yeah, that's right. We want to provide that, you know, quick turnaround. And as you mentioned, look, we can't give advice on a financial side of thing or the performance side of thing. But what we can give advice on is whether or not it's suitable for our requirements. And mm. if it is, then, hey, there's no reason why we can't do it beforehand. We'll put a clause into that letter of offer that says, you know, it's subject to settlement. I know some people can be a little bit worried that, oh, am I locked in to something if I don't purchase the property? No, I'm um, definitely not. It would only be a lease agreement if you were to proceed with the purchase. So I guess it makes sense that you only want to be renting properties for ADF members when it's sort of connected with a base, as in that's where they work, right? Yeah. Is there any sort of general rules of thumb, like how far from the base? And and do you like to, I don't know, it's, it's probably like a construct thing, but I imagine you like having houses all over the joint as part of communities, right, rather than yeah, yeah. putting all ADF members together on the same street. Absolutely. No, you've hit the nail on the head with those ones too. So mm. uh, essentially, we require our properties to be within 30 kilometers of a defense base. So that's, um, you know, you pick out where the base is. Um, you can do just a quick Google Maps search of where your property is to the nearest defense base, and, and that'll give you a, a kilometers, kilometer radius. So we want it to be within 30 Ks. But if it's closer, that's great. And then, yeah, in terms of the communities, we really want our properties to integrate with the community. So we are looking for great locations with access to amenities. But yeah, we want to integrate with the community. We don't like to take, you know, whole suburbs or whole sections of suburbs and create our own, you know, micro communities as such. We want to integrate with everyone and, you know, try and benefit the community from that sense. Yeah. And do you prefer new stuff over existing stuff or just, you know, you consider both on their own merit? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of both. I mean, new stuff's great. We love new stuff here, nice new properties, nice new inclusions. It's all, all really great. But, you know, something that you can't get with new properties often is location. You know, sometimes that great location comes with an older property and and that those two things need to be taken into account. So that's a common misconception we have with DHA. We hear it quite a bit is, is people say, oh, you only take brand new properties. You know, I won't even bother. But we've direct leased properties into the portfolio that are 10, 15, 20 years old under certain circumstances. We even have a property up in Woolloomooloo in in, um, Sydney, which is over 100 years old. We direct leased that a couple of years ago. Now, that obviously had some significant renovations done to it, but but that's a location-based decision, right? That's right next to the base there, great location, all that type of thing. So. I'm sure you have some senior officer probably swatting it up in a nice place there in Wollongaloo, which is good. But I guess it's horses, of course. I'm really intrigued how you match stuff, but it's probably out of the scope of this podcast. So for, for you and your team, um, when you're looking at at different opportunities, what what is like an ideal property for a DHA investment? Well, you sort of spoke, yep. you know, local amenities, and I imagine yep. that means schools and stuff and, you know, yep. Yep. communities. Is there anything else that ticks the box? 
Yeah, we have we have sort of two different products which we like to fit our properties into. One we would call a, a service residence and that has some stipulations on it. We need three or four bedrooms. We need a bathroom, a separate toilet and an ensuite. We need, you know, a living area, a kitchen, a certain size, backyard, a double garage or a single garage and some storage out the back, that type of thing. So, you know, we're looking for that property. We're looking for, you know, that in the suburbs and similar to that. But we also have a different product, which we call our our choice properties. And, and those choice properties aren't subject to those same stipulations, but they need to have something, you know, uh, somewhat of an X factor, I like to explain it as. And that's where that can come in. So we're looking for, you know, location-based In Canberra, a quick example of this is, hey, I'm going to give up my property with the backyard. Where would I like to live? Maybe I'd like to live on the Kingston Foreshore where, you know, that's close access to restaurants, to nightlife, to, you know, you've got the lake for all of your active people out there, that type of thing. So a couple of different products. We look for freestanding houses. We look for townhouses. We also look for apartments in certain areas. So what I would say is, you know, if you're looking for a specific area, reach out to us. We're open to a number of different things and and I don't want to to get misconstrued as we only want one kind of product, which mm. maybe has happened a little bit in the past. So yeah, okay, and and this is you know what I spoke about. You going through this pathway of changing and evolving uh, for the needs of of ADF members, and you know to try and gain more properties um, mm. under management. But so, what works for you from an investor or a sort of potential client point of view? It's you probably want people who subscribe to the idea before you start chatting to them would be a key thing, but but what makes a good investor for you? And and probably it's those people that go, I want to do more than one. This probably happens as well, right? Yeah, well, they're great. We have a number of investors who have several properties with us. So hopefully we're providing good value and service for those guys. But, you know, what are we looking for? We're looking for a lot of different things, but what we really want is we want an investor who's, you know, open to the process. We want an investor who knows what they're looking for. I think that's a good point. You know, I won't lie to everyone and say our product is perfect for absolutely every circumstance and every investor out there because it's, you know, it's just impossible to do so. But, you know, we do do some things really well. You know, we offer long term. We have a number of services, including with our product that makes us different from the market. So, you know, I think for us, we're looking for investors who know what they're after and understand that maybe what we provide fits in with their overall strategy. I think that's a really good point. So, yeah, I think I think that's probably what I would say in that circumstance. Yeah. Okay. No, it's, it's interesting. I've learned a lot. You know, I'm happy we had a yarn, Luke, because, you know, I sort of was across a bit what you did, but I'm a lot more informed now. So hopefully um, people can take that away and start thinking about whether or not this would work for them. There's these two reports, and we'll make them available, um, property management, a fee comparison report summary, and that's for – detached houses, and there's also another one for flat units and apartments. We're, we're DHA, through this research, go and look at this holistic cost of whole properties. And I imagine most investors will probably start there going, am I going to be better off doing this or am I going to be worse yeah, off doing yeah. this? It's, and, and that's a natural place, right? It's got to be yeah. two things of property investment. Have I bought a good place? And is it going to go up in value? That's a different thing. And then am I getting the right return on it from a cash point of view? Yeah. But I take the point that – you know, the long-term leasing may be an attractive proposition to people that just go, I don't want to deal with it. I can think of some of my properties where I go, I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Yeah. So, so how do people find out more? Can they speak to you, your team? Like, yeah, how do they, yeah, how do they, how do they track down more info on you guys? Uh, we have a few different options. So, um, we have a phone number. Obviously, um, you can call one three 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 four two. Just follow the prompts there to talk to our leasing team. We have an email address. It's leasing at dha.gov.au. Reach out to that. Ask us a question, and and we'll put you in contact with you know the people in the area that you're looking or, or whatever it might be. We have our website, dha.gov.au. Jump on there. There's plenty of information on there. You can put your application through if you own a property already. And I'll note if you are interested, but you want to find out a little bit more, we run webinars every month. We've actually got one on today at one o'clock. Um, okay. But well. <laughs> yeah, every month we run, we just sort of run through what it means to lease your property to DHA. So if anyone's interested in that, you can just pop your email address in on the website and we can sign you up to that as well. So yeah, look, what I'll always say is if you have any questions whatsoever, reach out, ask them, you know, we've got a big team here that's excited to talk to people and see if there's something we can provide to you that fits in with what, you know, your, as I said, your overall strategy or or what your property might be. So reach out, ask it, and we'll see, see what we can do. All right. Nice. I'm being curious. That's the best problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Check it out. Have a look. Um, Yeah. A couple of things I've learned there. So mate, Luke, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having a yarn. Um, I know that we'll see you again at some point in time. Um, you know, go and check out smartproductinvestment.com today. You guys will probably 
looking just a little bit, bit further, we'll make those reports available as well. So probably management fee comparison report summary. There's two of them, one for det- detached houses and another one for flats, units and apartments. This is where they actually look at the holistic cost of owning invest property. And, and maybe you've never really thought about your own investment property that way. So it might be a good catalyst for doing it to actually look at the total cost to hold rather than what you're paying away to a property manager. Uh, we'll do more on property management moving forward. Uh, remember to go and check out these guys at DHA, Smart Property Investment, social media, find a Smart Property HQ. We'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property, or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.